Well, good day. Welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. In today's video, I would like to kind of follow on from the previous video, which was, I believe, episode 45, covering the Hermes rocket, this typewriter. I'd like to talk about uh, some of the issues that I raised concerning this typewriter, which was related to the escapement mechanism. And I'd also like to cover a couple of features that I forgot to mention on this typewriter. But the main subject for today is going to be talking about care and feeding of the escapement mechanism. Stay tuned. Okay, there were just a few features that I failed to mention on the Hermes rocket that I felt I should cover. Uh, one of those is when you go to center the carriage on the case of the typewriter so you can put the lid on and store it, um, there's a red dot on this uh, linear bar where the uh, margin settings are at. There's a red dot adjacent to the 60, and if you center that red dot onto this um, middle bracket back here, that ensures that the knobs are properly centered on the body of the typewriter for storage. So that's the first issue. The second issue I wanted to talk about, or the second feature, is I told you about the uh, platen release lever on the right side that releases the tension on the pressure rollers. Well, there's also a little knob up here on the left side that you can also use with your left hand for releasing the tension. The difference between the two is the one on the right side latches into place. It'll latch it open, whereas the one on the left side is just temporary. You have to hold it, okay? So that's the second feature. The third feature, uh, I have to open up the and deploy the uh, carriage return lever and probably tilt it like this. So the third feature I want to show you is involving the left platen knob. And what happens is there is a little, I should fold this down, it's in the way, there is a little metal semi-circular segment piece in the side of the left platen knob. And what happens is if you turn the left platen knob toward the front of the machine, the top of the knob toward the front of the machine, and you have to do that by either holding the right platen knob or holding the pressure roller so it doesn't turn. But if you turn this, the top of this knob toward the front of the machine like that, it'll unlock the ratcheting. It disengages the ratcheting so you can adjust your typing position vertically to go into pre-printed forms and boxes. And then if you turn the top of the knob back toward the rear, like that, it'll lock and it'll, you'll have the ratcheting again. On my machine, this was really hard to turn and I had to loosen this little center screw. Um, the, the other feature I wanted to mention uh, that I failed to mention is on both the left and right side body, just in front of the platen, is a lever. And if you push the, it in this way or in that way, it'll re manually reverse the ribbon. So that was covering a few of the features of the Hermes rocket I failed to mention. So now the main subject of this video uh, was inspired by the fact that in the Hermes rocket video I mentioned the problems I was having with this machine due to wear on the um, escapement gear and the linear rack gear. Some of the designs that were common to many brands, as I'll show you here, I have a handful of typewriters we can, we can look at, is the way the escapement mechanism engages with the carriage. Uh, so this little drawing, um, let's start on the right here. Um, this is representative of this linear rack gear that runs underneath the carriage. It runs the length of the carriage from left to right. And one edge of it has, has teeth on it. So it's a toothed linear rack. And it engages the escapement gear. Now, the escapement mechanism is different on a, a lot of machines, but there's usually a larger gear underneath that's the actual escapement mechanism where all the uh, device in there that engages and disengages the escapement based on whether you're typing a letter or a space bar, et cetera, uh, backspacing, doing the tabs and all that. But then on the top of the gear is a small gear that actually does the engaging with the rack gear. And this is kind of a side view representation of that. You can see the large escapement mechanism here, which I've sort of just drawn stylistically. And then on top of it is the smaller cog that actually engages this rack gear. So this dark bar, that's representing the, the side view of this um, linear rack here. And you can see where my arrow is drawn that this is where the linear rack here and the escapement are, in, are engaged. Now the way that many uh, typewriter designs will 
disengage the, uh, the escapement with the carriage release lever is they pivot this bar. So this bar kind of pivots like that and it pivots the toothed edge out of the way of the escapement gear so that the uh, carriage is then free to move without the escapement controlling it. Um, on this particular Hermes rocket, the problem I was having was when the escapement was supposed to be in the engaged position, what was happening, it was very slightly tipped up like this to where only the bottom corner of that rack gear was actually engaging the gear. And of course, because of wear over time, that caused it to intermittently skip. And I had to bend a linkage related to the carriage release lever to get this uh, in the engaged position to get that linear rack gear to sit down parallel even with that gear and for it to engage solidly. What I'd really like to talk about is why this can happen and what you can do to prevent it from happening. Now, the instruction manual for my Hermes rocket, which I do have the original instruction manual, it says for storing the carriage, uh, for storing the typewriter in its case, of course, you're going to fold back the um, uh, carriage return lever, and then you're going to center the red dot um, onto this middle bracket as I showed you earlier so the knobs are centered and then it says for you to snap the case on of course. Well what's actually holding the carriage from moving is the escapement. That linear rack gear is still engaged with that cock. Now there's not much room for movement between the outside edge of the knob and where the case snaps on on both sides. There's not much room for movement but there is at least one gear tooth of movement. And so if you store this typewriter in the case vertically like this, or if you slam it, it gets jarred while it's being stored, um, the forces are actually working on the teeth of the linear rack here, how they engage with the cog of the escapement. That's the only thing holding the carriage. If you put too much force on the typewriter on the carriage side force, it could strip one of those gears out, one of those teeth out. Uh, not totally break it off necessarily, but it could round off the tip of the gears a little bit, which is going to be an, an increased amount of wear, which over time is going to cause the, the escapement to start skipping because those teeth are not meshing and engaging like they should. Now, this little typewriter being a portable and being uh, of not as many features. It's not as full featured of a typewriter as some of the larger machines. It does not have a locking mechanism for the carriage. So other machines have a lock that is intended to keep uh, the carriage secure without using the escapement mechanism to secure it. Now other machines use a similar kind of an engagement system between the carriage and the escapement. This is the Swedish made Fawcett 1620 and you're looking underneath the right side of the carriage and this is the carriage re release lever and as I push the lever you can see that this linear rack gear with teeth on one edge exactly or very similar to the way the Hermes works it's working in the same manner it's moving that linear gear out of the way of the escapement gear so that you, you're free to move the carriage on its bearings, okay? So if you didn't have a locking mechanism on this typewriter the, and you were moving it, the only thing that's going to be keeping this carriage from breaking, the, uh, from sliding is going to be the, the, the teeth of the escapement mechanism engaging each other. So this is the left side of the Fawcett 1620 and it, this machine does have a carriage lock mechanism. The lever for it is down here uh, just above the ribbon color selector on the left side of the keyboard. And what I want to have you make note of is when I move the carriage a little bit to the left, on this frame there's a slot right down there. And that slot, when you pull up and forward the carriage lock mechanism and slide it, this little linkage is supposed to engage right there, it's supposed to engage in that slot. And that's supposed to keep the carriage from moving in transport. Well, what happens on this machine is that lever just, what's holding it in place is the spring action of the spring motor. <laughs> so if you vibrate it any, any way, that lock mechanism is going to fall down and unlock the carriage. 
as it just as you just saw there. So there may be something in my machine that needs to be adjusted. Maybe there's a spring missing or something, but it doesn't really stay in place very well. And so um, if you're transporting a typewriter like this and uh, you're relying on just the escapement mechanism to keep the carriage from moving, you're going to damage the escapement mechanism if the, the typewriter suffers a severe blow. Secondly, even if your machine has a locking mechanism like this, it's not always accurate or not always reliable, okay? So that may not necessarily save your escapement mechanism from damage due to shipment and the transportation. Okay, let's look at another example of an escapement mechanism, uh, how it engages with the carriage. This is a Smith Corona Silent. And um, so you're looking again underneath the right side of the carriage. This again is the linear rack gear with teeth on it. And when you operate the carriage release lever, it's pivoting that bar out of the way, just like you saw on the other machines. And the thing about the Smith Coronas that's interesting is the whole escapement mechanism is visible. Is, is it right there? There's that tooth escapement cog, the main cog right there. But uh, that's kind of how it engages and disengages right there, just pivoting that bar out of the way. This one right here. So again, um, the forces on the carriage due to shipping and handling um, can strip out the gears of your escape and unless you have a way of protecting it. Let's see how they do that here on the Smith Corona Silent. Okay, looking at the right side of the carriage from the top now, um, there is, of course, this is the carriage release lever. You push it towards you to slide it, disengaging that rack gear. Um, if you push the carriage toward the right, there is a lever down here. And what you do is you pull it up, that releases that, that rack gear, and then it hits a stop near the middle of the carriage, and that's the storage position for the typewriter. It centers the knobs on the body of the typewriter, or you can put it in the case. What's holding the carriage toward the left-hand direction of the typewriter is the spring tension of the spring motor. Uh, and But there's nothing really holding the carriage from moving to the right, because this little lever doesn't actually latch. It's just permitting the spring motor to keep it pulled against a stop. So if I push the carriage toward the right from the left knob, it's going to disengage by itself. And now what's holding the carriage in place is the escapement gears as they're engaged. And again, if this typewriter is being shipped and it suffered a jar, and let's say you even, you even lock this lever into place, but then it suffered a blow that moved the carriage to the right, it would disconnect that, and then if it suffered another blow, let's say back toward the left, it's going to uh, put a lot of force in those uh, uh, escapement uh, gear teeth mechanism. So again, don't necessarily rely on the locking mechanism that's in your typewriter to think that it's going to protect the escapement gears from being stripped and damaged. Now this is a Olivetti Underwood 21, and you're, you're looking again from the underneath side of the right side of the carriage. Carriage release lever is up here on the top. You can see the linear tooth rack gear, but when you operate the carriage release lever, it doesn't pivot the rack gear itself. What it's doing is it's pivoting another mechanism that goes inside and it moves something out of the way of part of the escapement gear itself. But it's still disengaging the escapement gear from the um, linear rack gear. Now, there is a lock on this typewriter, but it's on the other side, so let me show you that. Okay, you're looking at the underside of the left side of the carriage on this Olivetti Underwood 21, and notice this lever here. This is the carriage lock lever on the left side. Now, if I release the carriage and move the carriage out toward the left, you're going to see a slot down here. And <clears throat> what happens, if I can hold my mouth right, <laughs> is when you lift up on this lever, this locking lever, um, there is a lever that actually engages inside that slot, and now I can't move, I cannot move the carriage. It is immobilized, and you have to lower that lever in order to get it to release. So there, it's, it's engaging a little piece into that slot to keep the carriage from moving. Now, that looks like a lot better design than a lot of the other typewriter designs of locking the carriage, and it is more reliable than some of them. It's certainly better than the 
the Smith Corona method that doesn't really lock it. It's certainly better than the Hermes rocket that there is no lock at all. Um, and it's better than the, the way the Fawcett 1620 works. However, I will remind you of this, that in the locked position, the lever is up. And just due to vibration and gravity, it could fall, right? Could fall down. And that would unlock the carriage. So it would be better if they had it so that it was locked in the down position. That way gravity is working for you. But they have it in the up position is locked. So again, you don't want to rely completely on a locking mechanism to protect your escapement from being stripped out due to abnormally hard handling. Okay, the final example today I want to show you, this is the Hermes 3000. And this particular one is what I call the Naked Rider, where I've taken the chassis of the typewriter outside the plastic case and mounted it on this piece of wood. Um, so this is the right side of the carriage again. On this particular design, the white button is the carriage release lever, and it's not actually pivoting that rack here out of the way. It's actually moving part of the escapement mechanism internal to the escapement mechanism, freeing it up. Uh, but to make the carriage move. But there is a carriage lock, and this is one of the better designs I've seen. So the carriage lock is this little uh, triangular shaped piece that has a hook protruding out right here. And what locks it is there is a lever sticking out and a vertical protrusion right here. And you have to pull the lever down and slide the carriage back until it engages in the little slot. Now, the spring tension of the spring motor of the carriage is pulling the carriage this way, but this particular lever is now locked in the slot there and it can't move. See right there? It's just, it's just engaged in that little slot and no matter how you move it, it's not going to come out. And um, you literally have, to, even if you pushed it, it's not going to move. You have to push it, hold it, and then release the carriage release mechanism to disengage it. So this is one of the better uh, carriage lock mechanisms that I've seen on, type, on the typewriters that I own. It looks like they put a lot more thought into ensuring that the uh, carriage lock mechanism can't become unlocked due to excessive force and handling, which, in which case it's going to cause the escapement gears to strip out. Well, I hope this was educational for you. I think the big takeaway message uh, in today's video is that the relationship between the rack gear on the carriage and the escapement, uh, that, that engaging, is what controls the movement of the carriage. And it's, um, it it's supposed to lock the carriage into place except when you're spacing or typing a character or moving the uh, carriage release lever or backspacing, etc. But even though it feels like it locks the carriage into place, you don't want to rely on that escapement meshing to immobilize the carriage during shipment. Okay, because this is a common way for how escapement mechanisms get damaged. Now, I've seen other typewriter experts um, and with videos, and I'll put a link down below in the descriptions of one in particular, but he recommends to ship typewriters. He recommends that you wire the carriage release mechanism in the unengaged position, either with a little bailing wire or a, a tie wrap or something, so that the, the escapement is unengaged. And then immobilize the carriage with packing material and maybe tape or something so the carriage can't move that way. This way, if there is a severe blow in shipping, the escapement gears aren't taking the force of that blow. They're disengaged, they're safe, and what's immobilizing the carriage during shipment is the actual physical uh, securing of the carriage uh, in the way you packed it. So again, um, you might have noticed in the previous video, episode 45, about the Hermes rocket, you remember the little green messenger bag that I use that I showed you I put the, the typewriter into the bag? Well, if you were very observant, you might have noticed that I put the typewriter into the bag on its side instead of on its back. And the proper way to carry a typewriter like that in a messenger bag is on its back. Let me show you. Ah. If you're going to put a typewriter in a messenger bag, don't put it sideways, put it on its end. 
this way there's no the the carriage mechanism is horizontal as you carry the bag there's no forces trying to slide the carriage against the escapement gears don't put it like this and then you drop the bag on the floor and all of a sudden all that force on the carriage vertically is causing stress on those escapement gears so that's a big lesson for today i know that escapement mechanisms are common in typewriters those problems, I mean, are common in typewriters with used machines that have seen decades of use and wear and tear. And as you can see from the way this Hermes 3000 was designed, obviously the engineers who designed these machines were also very conscious of escapement problems even back then. And so they were trying to figure out ways of ensuring that the mechanisms were uh, safer uh, kept in a, in a safer state during lock shipment when you can figure out how to lock a carriage safely without it damaging the escapement. Well, this has been another episode of the typewriter video series. I hope this was uh, inf informational and helpful for you guys to help keep your machines in better running order and how not to, uh, uh, how to keep them from suffering damage in shipment or handling. Until next time, you guys have a great day.